this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. How are you all today? Thank you so much for joining me. Um, today, I'm. Um, this is a bit of a special video. This is part of a video hop. Um, we're a group called Stamp Around UK, so we're all UK demonstrators. And um, we've come together today to do a little video hop. So you're watching my video. When you're done, you can go down to the, the description in the below the video and there'll be links to all the other videos in the hop. Um, so I hope you do. We'll, we'll all hop round and have a look at what everybody's making. Um, some very talented um, demos in this group, so don't miss out. Um, this is my project for the for the hop. Our theme is masculine today. I hate making mail cards. I like flowers and butterflies and cute teddies and things. I'm not really a masculine kind of girl when it comes to card making, but I pushed myself to this one. And I had bought this set, and I do I do love this set actually. And I have made a couple of men's cards with it before. It's my go-to men's set actually, which is a bit of a shame because now it's retiring in June, so won't be my go-to set for very much longer. And for me, this is actually quite a fancy fold card I know in some respects it's not very fancy fold but for me it is so I took a took a normal card blank except tent wise that way around and then I folded the first part over and then added another panel I'm going to show you how I did it so let's get started so you need a sheet of our nice whisper white card stock which is um, the extra thick the thick whisper white just trying to find my trigger behind me here here we go right and you're going to trim this this is an a4 sheet of card so i'm trimming it it's going to end up at ten and a half so i'm trimming it in the center long ways if you're in america your paper is slightly different sizes but um you need it to be ten and a half centimeters or four and an eighth wide four and an eighth inch inches so we're going to score up there so you've got a spare piece and you've got the piece that we're going to use. And then I'm going to put my cutting blade out of the way. And I'm going to score this at 14.8. So quite precise measurements here. So this should be in fairly central. Might not be exact because it's a funny length A4 card. It's 298 millimetres, so it's a bit strange. And then um, from that crease, it needs to be 7.2. So I'm going to take that crease and put it at 7.2, which is there, and do that. It would have been better if I'd done it cumul cumulative, so it would be 21, 22 it would need to be at. Let's see if that's right. Let's see if I've done it right. Let me open this out. I should be scoring. Oh, yes, look at that. I am scoring at 22. Yay. Um, yeah, I need to change that on my measurements. Right, let's pop my um, trimmer away. Right, so we're going to fold over as normal. And it should, the edges should come together. Yeah, they do fairly well. So, like that. And then we're going to bend this one back. Now, this might be slightly longer. Yes, it is. Because I didn't, I definitely didn't want it to be shorter. So I just erred on the side of caution. So I can trim a little bit of that off. Do you see that's overhung? Actually, I'm not sure that it matters that it overhangs, to be honest. Maybe I'll leave it. Okay, right. I haven't got my trombo out. So let's do that. I was trying to think before I came on camera everything I needed. I forgot one of the most important things. Let's find my little pot. Is that damp? Not very. Put a little bit of water in there. So I keep my Tombow upside down in a little jar with a little bit of water. It's all right, this is just water that I keep for the same, for that purpose. A little bit of sponge in the bottom there or cotton wool and keep it. And then you can just keep it upside down all the time and it's ready to use. You don't have to keep um, shaking it down to fill it up or whatever. Right, okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of um, designer series paper, which is slightly bigger than my panel. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut, stick it, and then I'm gonna trim all the edges off so it fits really flush. So I'm gonna take my Tombow, I'm gonna glue around all the edges of my panel. Oh, this D DSP, by the way, the measurements, are seven and a half by 11 centimeters. Sorry, I haven't done that in inches. I will put it on, I'll try and remember to put it on my blog after. Um, and the paper is called Come Sail Away and it's some um, um, sailing images. So it's got sailboats and um, rope with knots and lighthouses on the rear of this piece, the reverse of this piece. Uh, but it's got some quite nice plainish. I like, I do like a stripe. 
so I quite like this one. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up very carefully with the fold. So I want that to be absolutely flush. Press it down. And then you can see it's too big because I cut it deliberately too big. So I'm going to bring some scissors in and just cut like so. There we go, like so, there we go. Right, so that's our card blank. Right, now let's do our panel with the little sailboats. And what we're using here is the lily pad lake and the lily pad dies. Um, are they called the lake lakeside dies, I think they're called. Um, I didn't say at the beginning, but these are going to be retiring. Oh, I think I did say these are going to be retiring in June. So if you like them, you need to get them now. I can't, sadly, I can't remember whether they're, there's a lot of things reduced on the retired list. I can't remember whether this is one of them. Right. Anyway, so what we are going to do um, is take a stitched rectangle punched out of our thin whisper white. Now this was was die cut with this rectangle. So it's the third biggest stitched rectangle and it measures 11 centimeters by 7.6. That's the size you need. Okay. Now what I would normally have done is stamped on this and then um, die cut it so that I could position the stamp exactly where I wanted because I'm on camera I'm not going to do that because I don't like using my die cutter on camera some of you will know so I'm just trying to find my knight of navy pad so I'm going to come in with my knight of navy pad ink up this this long wavy stamp from the set and I'm going to try and position it in the right place first time wish me luck I'm going in oops knocking the Getting my head in the way of the camera. Um, might not be perfect, but it'll do for our purposes. Oh, that's not bad. Bit, bit to one more to one side than I'd like it, but it's not bad. There we are. Let's put my. Um, oh, while we've got this out, let's just stamp the happy birthday message up in the corner as well. Here, and this is being. This is um, the happy birthday from Bonanza Buddies. I really like this happy birthday. It's another set that's going. I hate stamping up doing this to me. They're taking all my favourite sets away. Um, and I, lo I love that happy birthday. It's just quite cute and I like this font and like everything about it. Right, there we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a blender pen to these little waves. You can see on mine I've stamped them and then they look a bit sort of watercolored I just did that with a with a blender pen so I just came in with one of our blender pens and just smooched the ink about a little bit and then you get this lovely watercolory effect you don't need to add anything to it don't go over it too much because you'll get you'll start to wear away the paper so you just need to be a little bit careful but you can move the ink around enough To do that there we go there we are and it just looks a bit watery because it's all patchy and watercolory quite like that effect right okay next we're gonna need to do the boats right the boats are both on one stamp or three all three of them on one stamp when you die cut them they cut cuts out all three all at once so I've stamped this already in Memento black ink because I wanted it to dry properly before I coloured it. Just need to be a little bit careful. And I'm going to come in with some blends. You don't have to use blends for this. If you've only got, um, if you've got markers, you can use markers. It's a tiny, tiny little bit of colouring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Poppy Parade and I'm going to do a little bit of Poppy Parade colouring. I'm using the thin edge of my blend because these are quite small spaces. I'm going to do the red red there. I, I did um, experiment. I'm going to actually do a different bit of the this. So I'm just going to do the top bit and the middle bit. I did, did the second one down and the bottom one last time. But I'm just going to do change it up just a little bit. Um, there we go. I did do um, boats before just using blues. But they didn't show up very well on the wave. So I changed it. In fact, I used those boats for another card, which I'll bring you another day. 
I actually made two of the two cards with these boats, these yachts, I guess they are. Right, okay, that's balmy blue. That's oh no, it's not seaside spray. I tell a lie. Seaside spray. That was Poppy Parade, and I'm gonna bring in dark daffodil yellow. Daffodil delight, sorry. And colour there. Colour those little stripes. And then oops. This is light soft suede, just to do the hulls of the boats. Very nice little easy bit of colouring. And then the other thing we need, which I might just have enough room for on here, is the sun. So this is the, the stamp for the sun. I'm going to stamp it in Mango Melody. Stamp it over here. It can be die cut out, remember, so it won't matter. And I'm going to come in with my mango, dark mango melody pen and just do a little bit around here. Don't have to be ever so careful because this is just going to all blend, which is why they're called blends, I think. Brilliant. Okay, actually I'm going to use the light daffodil yellow and see what that does. Oh no, that's light mango melody. Now I will use the daffodil delight. Um, okay, I'm going to do a bit of it. I've ruined the tip of this um, daffodil delight by colouring on glimmer paper. Not a good idea. Don't try that at home, guys. Um, it, the glimmer paper looked lovely, but I've ruined the tips of some of my blends. Um, debating whether I need to replace them while because um, they're on the retiring list because we're only going to sell them in packs now I'm not going to sell them singly so if I want to replace the single ones I need to do it now there we go and that's all blended in really nicely so you get sort of a two-tone sun that's um, quite wet at the minute it will dry a lot nicer than that you can see it comes through um, okay so by the magic of whatever Here's one I made earlier. So I've got the boats that I've already die cut with the, the, the die. And I've got the sun, which I've already die cut. So what we need to do is take some dimensionals, fix these on here, and the sun up in the sky. Like so. So let's find my dimensionals. You need tiny, tiny bits of dimensional, so you probably end up cutting some of these, even the small ones, cutting them apart. So you can use some full ones at the bottom here, but then just so that make sure that the, the sails don't sag, just cut one in half. So it's great. You can be really economical with these and put that as far up to the tip as you can, so that will. Yeah, and this one, I think probably you only need one on the back there. And then the sun, one, two, three. There we go. And what I meant to do on my other card before I came on camera, I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to add some little birds to it. Um, with our black journaling pens, which are also retiring. Honestly, there's so much stuff going, but it means we've got a lovely new catalogue full of lovely new stuff. Stampin' Up! is very good at getting us to part with our money by showing us so much lovely stuff. This is the sun. Get all the backing off. Still finding backings of dimensionals all over my house. Put him up there. And the last little boat yacht and he's going to go on the horizon here there we go right okay right and what i said was i'm going to take if i can find them i've got some of our black journaling pens here so i'm going to take one these are really really fine black pens so i'm just going to do a couple of little birds there we go, flying in the sky, like so. Um, right, okay, now we need to mount that on a navy panel. So that is going to mount on there, again with Tombow. Actually, 
one is I've done a, the black panel at the front is slightly the navy panel at the front is slightly bigger um, than, than the other one which and I'm going to show you why in a minute so that's going on there so this is the front panel with the slightly bigger Knight of Navy panel. Um, I think it measures 11.6 by 8.2 centimetres. And the other one I've cut smaller because it's going to go behind. And just to make sure there wasn't any overlap, any of it peeking out and showing, I made this one slightly bigger. So that goes there, like so. And then that is going to glue to our card front like that so I'm going to mark with a pencil roughly where I need it to cut with the glue to come to and then I'm going to glue on the back here like so and I might just smooth that out again with my cocktail stick just because I don't want any glue squidging out, making a mess. And Tombow does stay to, seem to stay quite sticky, so if you do get it anywhere, it can be a bit of a pain. Right, okay, so what I need to do is glue that up to where my glue is. Like so. Make sure it's centered. And then turn it over. Oh, that's not straight. And make sure it's straight. There we go. Good thing about Tombow, it's why I love it, is you get a bit of wiggle room. You can reposition things. Right, okay, so we're nearly done. Um, is that straight? Is that more or less straight? Yeah, I think so. Right, we've got another panel here. What I want, oh, I'm going to glue on the white panel first. So exactly the same as the front, except the navy is slightly, slightly bigger. The Knight of Navy panel is slightly smaller, sorry, slightly smaller than the front one. And you'll see why in a minute. Because what I want to do is I want this panel to be exactly underneath this one. So I just thought if I made it slightly smaller, it would make that slightly easier. So what I'm going to do is I am going to mark the corners of this one with my pencil very lightly. I'm then going to glue my panel like so, so that I know it's not going to be showing from the other one. And then I can rub out these, these um, pencil marks. Oops. Now, when you put water on your thing, sometimes it absorbs it. So you sometimes get a little bit of of water coming out of the nozzle so you just need to have a piece of kitchen roll or tissue handy to get rid of that. I don't mind that because if it means I have a free flowing nozzle all the time without having to keep bang banging my dombo but you might not like that. We all have our little quirks us card makers all have our little shortcuts and things we like i have certain tools i love as you've seen i love my tweezers and whenever we go on a training day or meet up and do any crafting we always get a list of things we have to take and never includes tweezers because they're not a stamping up um thing um, and so I always forget to take mine and I'm always lost. I was sort of, so many times I think, oh, I'll use my tweezers. Oh, I haven't got them. Oh, I'll use my tweezers. Oh, I haven't got them. Right, there we go. That goes in there. Like so. And then we're just going to finish off by printing, stamping. Um, if I can find my memento pad. Which at the moment I can't. Oh, there it is over there there it is started off very tidy now my desk is absolute mess again we're just going to stamp where's the original one? Oh dear honestly what have i done with it? it's hiding under here here it is right just going to stamp little boats in the corner there again so it's just reminiscent of the front of the card where you're going to write your message so memento ink. Now I haven't left that to dry. So just if I was you, if you're doing this, do leave it to dry a little bit. I'm going to go straight in and hope that it doesn't um, smudge too much. 
should be okay, but just to be on the safe side, I would leave it a little bit longer than I'm leaving it now. Right, and we're nearly done. We've nearly made our card. So I'm going to do the same bit. So these ship, these boats are going to be exactly the same as the ones on the front of the card. So they could actually be the same boats that have moved along a bit. Um, I do love using our blends. I was so shocked when the retiring list came out and there's loads of blends on it. But they're all being repackaged, reconfigured, and we're no longer going to be able to buy them singly. So that's why they're on the retiring list. It's not because they're actually going. So don't panic if that's what you thought too. But if, you, if there are any single colours that you need, now is the time to get them. Right, there we go. And that is... A card now again, and usually for me, I've made identical cards. Um, for the video, normally I change it up a little bit, but I just like this one so much, thought I'd leave it as it was. So, there we go two fancy fold. Can I call that a fancy fold? Fold cards, right now. Don't forget, we are part of a video hop. Hope you've enjoyed my project, but don't forget, there's loads and loads of other wonderful projects to see. So just go to the description below, there'll be a whole list of links, and you can click on any of those. Hop round and have a look at what everybody else is up to. And if you're like me, having a, a hop with inspiration for masculine cards is really great because, like I said at the beginning, I'm not great at masculine cards, so anything that can help me um, would be great. Anyway, that's my card for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Do come back. We put we um, do a video hop on the first day of the month, every month. So do come back next time and see what we're up to. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.